evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Secrets of the Sire. We do this every Everybody Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> Talkradio.nyc. Coming at you live from New York City. As always, my better co-host. Better than dead from New York City. What do you mean better than dead? It's better than dead. Coming at you dead from New York City. Well, no one wants to come at you dead. No, you shouldn't. You should, you come, really at, you shouldn't. Should, you should come at you live as often as possible. When you're dead, you should have the respect to not come at anybody, actually. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, there's like a deeply layered, uh, yeah, layered joke just, in that. Just, just walk past it. There's a deeply, just keep going. <laughs> deeply, deeply. You're layered. making it worse than it already was. Oh, I'm making it. Yeah, I yeah, know. I actually really am. Um, as always, my co-host, the Lord of the Radio, Hassan Godwin. Hello. And in studio, but we're not going to move the camera. Well, let's move the camera. <laughs> a, little, a little bit. We got Mr. Pat Shand, What's writer extraordinaire. Hey, hey. Doing it up, and uh, we got a we had a great show tonight. Like we have a great show every week, but yeah. So stop saying that. I have been uh, <laughs> I've been actually you're making it seem like we uh, we sometimes don't. Oh, is that really is that a yeah. case? Am I like am I like actually like the flaw in our in our wheel? You're not the flaw. I'm just saying you're pointing out that there's a potential for flaw, and mm. then that's that's all people need is the idea that there could be a flaw, and then suddenly there is a flaw. So we had uh, we had one commenter on our last video too, which was like, "Get on with it. Stop introducing." Producing the video so much. <laughs> That's but he did it in Spanish, and so I had to use like that the Facebook translate button to like, try to figure out exactly. So what. you didn't even know he was like insulting you. I just wrote like, thanks for watching. Over. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like I'm glad you watched. Gracias. You know, <laughs> right, right, exactly. Like I was like, hey, that's really nice of you to insult us. Um, but thanks for thanks for watching because it counts as a view. It doesn't matter if you hate yeah. watch us yeah. or love. We watch still us. win. Right. We right, still win. Right. That, that, Senor, that is still. <laughs> you know, putting money in our and you're angry <laughs> in our imaginary bank account. Um, but know. yeah, we have Pat Chan in studio. We're going to do fall TV preview. We're going to talk about your Kickstarter. We're going to do all kinds of cool things. Another Kickstarter. This guy's like just just lousy with like books and and like work and <laughs> and it's just. I, li- I like that you use the adjective lousy. He's lousy with it. It's like he's just it's coming like out of prolific, his ears. Prolific, productive. I like lousy. No, that's, that's good positive. Word. Prolific <laughs> and productive <laughs> is like that's like praise. That's like. I'm, I'm kissing his ass. Well, I'm this not. is true, actually. I'm not this kissing is true. his ass. I know this true. guy. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we treat he's, all guests. He's lousy with a lot of work. And you know? He works really hard. As always, uh, if you're catching us live, you're catching us live on talkradio.nyc. The apologize. number to call is 877-480-4120. If you're catching us on the podcast, either on iHeartRadio, iTunes, SoundCloud, well, thanks for listening. And if you're catching us dead. Um, I don't care if you're listening to us in the car going, just get on with the show already. <laughs> we thank you Stop for listening. Stop introducing us. <laughs> All right. So, you know, a kind of cool thing this, this time around. Usually I get, I get really pissed off because news kind of breaks really fast. Like we could literally be doing a show. And then like that night, news the follow-up to what we just talked about will have already happened. Like yeah. Han Solo directors get fired. Great. We're going to give our predictions on who should take over. Great. The next day, Ron Howard took over. Thank God he was our number one prediction. And I was able to, to push that. That. Right, but right. you know, very furious. So last week, we actually had a whole week to do this, though, which was really rare. Uh-huh. Colin Trevorrow, Star Wars, not there anymore. Yes, he, creative, uh, creative differences. Oh, the old creative differences. But they gave fired. Us, <laughs> but they <laughs> gave us. They gave us a week, and now J.J. Abrams has taken over as the Star Wars director. And, yes, J.J. Uh, Abrams, and uh, to be written by... Um, well, J.J. Uh, Abrams launched a new era of Star Wars with The Force Awakens in 2015 is returning a complete Are we calling sequel. it that? Are we calling it the new era? Yeah, I think you, I think you have Doesn't to. Doesn't new mean point. bad? Is that, do you, by new, do you mean bad? Yeah, could be. Corporate? Could be something kind like that. Kind of soulless? Yeah, could is be that, something do like you that. Mean, do you mean that? I could, you yeah, mean? I could. I could mean that. All right, so um, we agree. <laughs> He did. So he, he launched will a new era. A new era to uh, as writer and director of Star Wars Episode <laughs> Nine. Abrams will co-write the film with Chris Terrio. Uh huh. Star Wars Episode Nine will be produced by Kathleen Kennedy, of course it will, and and a whole bunch of other folks. Bad Robot, Lucasfilm. With with the Force Awakens, JJ delivered everything we could possibly hope for, and I am so excited <laughs> that he is coming back to close out this trilogy. <laughs> says Kathleen Kennedy. We were we were hoping for mediocrity, and he exceeded our expectations. You know, it's new spelled N U by the so, way. 
new so, Star Trek. <laughs> Pat, Hassan and I, we do new some prep work for the show, amazingly right. enough. As, as, you know, yeah, I, I'm amazed a little. that we prep yeah, for our show. We do. We, do. we have and like we an had outline. This conversation. And, right. We, we had this conversation and said, you know, we've, had, we've talked about The Force Awakens. Hassan's not a fan. I am a fan. Mm-hmm. Um, I can tell, man. <laughs> really? No, I'm, I love the movie. I was moved. No, yeah, he moved to, right out of the theater. To the theater. exit. Yeah, right out of the theater. <laughs> moved right to the exit. Uh, but here's the thing. So I actually said, you know, watching it a second time, I see exactly what you're saying. I do. I get it. I get the whole... And South Park kind of talked about this, too, right? Like, South Park made a whole episode about how episode four was episode seven, you know? That right. They basically didn't do anything, that it's not a good movie. Um, it was a really good movie up until the point Han Solo actually makes his appearance, because then all of a sudden, okay. to my point, they're bridging two movies here's, 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 into here's, one. Here's what we got to do about that. It's a good movie... It's a terrible story. We got to differentiate it on that. It's a great popcorn movie. You can go to a movie and you go, oh, hey, you know what? I sat down. It was explosions in my face and stuff like that. <laughs> Nobody was talking. That was the guy sitting next to you. I look. <laughs> Look, I I told you that in confidence. And now you're telling me. <laughs> so that that's a that's a great movie experience. I've seen a lot of movies that I didn't love, but it was a great experience. It sure. was a great movie. Right? Now, was it a great story? Was it a you know? Did I did I get my twenty something dollars worth when I went to see the movie that I had seen already in 1977 and maybe a billion times between then and now? So, no, Pat Chan, really. you have written yes. countless Marvel novels. Your newest one is coming out when, and what we, is it? We literally tried to count November. them, and we gave up. Yeah. <laughs> that's how many that we are. We just can't count very much. No, though. that's true. Yeah, We're also... yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, Thor, Crusade of the Forgotten. All right. So, Marvel November. novelist. That, right. gives you some, that gives you some street little, cred. A little clout. Sure. A little okay. clout. Destiny okay. New York, did your sequel. That's a, a, a creator-owned yes. book that just got funded again, which is great. Indeed, yeah. It's on Kickstarter right now. And you've done so numerous things for Zenoscope, for... <laughs> um, what, what, what other companies am I missing here? I've worked uh, for IDW, Zenoscope, Avatar, The Lord Jesus Christ, American Mythology Press, <laughs> The uh, Empire, The Latter Day Saints, Publishing, <laughs> Julius Caesar. <laughs> so all those two, yeah. The reason I say that is right. I think we can fully agree that you are a, creden- a, a credential writer, like a, a credited writer. You are actually is you the have real credentials. Deal. Right. He's the real I have deal. been told just now by you. Yes, he's yeah. the Do genuine article. Do you think Episode Seven had a poor story, which is what Hassan was? saying no and i'll say uh, i will explain why okay I, I don't remember epi- <laughs> uh, the uh, first one episode four okay that whole thing well, me out by the way wait a minute <laughs> I, well, <laughs> well, well, let's I let our guests finish i saw it a- as a kid i saw all the movies as a kid when they put them back in theaters sure. for a while um and i was not impressed i didn't love them as a kid i i felt bored throughout um and i'm sure i would appreciate them now Sure, but now you would. I again. never felt the desire to watch these movies again until I saw and loved The Force Awakens. Okay, to me, that did for me as an adult what Star Wars. Interesting. Did now that's not an interesting perspective. That right? explains a lot, though. What do you mean? <laughs> Where I'm not going to quantify that. <laughs> <laughs> I just said that explains a lot. No, but that's actually an interesting perspective, right? Because we're always coming it's at a it, perspective. Com- well, no, no, but, but it's a different it's, perspective. I don't know how interesting it is. Well, but. Say it's very interesting because I would say that most people come at these movies from either having loved them as a kid and then thinking that the prequels kind of, but, kind of okay. decimated it. All right. And then kind of getting that back. As a counterpoint, do you, don't you think it's kind of... It's kind of significant that he didn't like them before he saw them, and then he did like them, versus maybe if you liked them before and then you saw that, maybe you wouldn't like it. But shouldn't a... I'm glad he jumped in. Yeah, he saved you. He saved your butt. Shouldn't a good movie stand on its own, right? Yes. So... Star Wars Force Awakens, for me, stood on its own because I, I, I have no... I don't get how people can say that. I have no nostalgia for Star Wars. That's probably I, I, why. Well, <laughs> but I have no nostalgia for good movies But that's that a I good see. thing, too. I saw Jerry. Return of the King first, and I think that's the best of all the other movies. <laughs> um, and I don't really know why it had ten endings or who any of these other characters were, but it... Damn it! There was a lot of swords in it, but and people died. Ju- just to it was play a great movie. Advocate, Force Awakens stands alone. It stands no, alone. it doesn't. It does. It, it does not. But how, 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 how does Force I, Awakens stand alone? How does it stand alone? How did I, as someone who doesn't even remember what happens in the first three, enjoy the story of this? Enjoy the new characters, and uh, of course, that, well, just because just because you enjoyed thing. them does not mean it stands alone. It but just here's means... the interesting part about that, right? Because the the, the, the gripe of Episode Seven is is right. that they copied Episode Four. Now, 
Now, you saw episode four. Right. You weren't impressed with it. Right. You see episode seven, you're like, hey, this is actually pretty good. Right, because I cared about the characters. You've completely invalidated your writing credentials. No. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit. <laughs> A I, little I bit. I do think that, though, the uh, comics community... Throwing all my I'm Pat Chan books away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tearing down my Pat, Pat Chan no self. One, no one listens to our show. Okay, cool, cool. So don't worry. <laughs> if they did, I'd be crucified for this. Right. But, Hypothetically speaking. Yes. But if we had an audience. I didn't grow if up reading comics, only. and but we're all right. in the... Outside of the comics community, yeah. Star Wars isn't held to this gigantic standard. You know, it's... It's the nerd movie, you know, and I, I wasn't <laughs> the nerd movie from the guy who's writing Thor. Yes. <laughs> What's happening? I, I, What's happening? I have become, in my old age, I am become nerd, you know? <laughs> the destroyer no, 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 of no, 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 comic no. books. Now, Pat, <laughs> as a loyal what listener to the show, and I know you are, we dissected what is a we actually define what a nerd is uh, versus a geek. I was here for that. I, yes. 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 No, 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 no. You weren't here for that because it was recently. We well, well we, he was we, listening. No, no. Back, we started that in the listening. green room, but then we actually did a whole show. It was the Great Debate Show, right? And we did right. nerd versus geek, and we actually defined that a nerd is very is is a geek is is a lover of all things, okay. um, whereas a nerd doesn't necessarily love all things, but is very very knowledgeable on very on like very specific things within within a genre within a universe. Okay, so I I don't mean to invalidate your entire argument, uh-huh. but uh-huh. I have a point that with two words, will okay, I disagree. Mm. Uh oh, it doesn't. In, <laughs> now it does not invalidate. <laughs> no, because this is like this standard. Is like good. these are right. actual right. definitions. The internet no. told me so. <laughs> Which internet? The <laughs> the damned internet. internet. The internet. But no, <laughs> I, I am definitely just uh, poking the bear here under Star Wars <laughs> things too. I, I don't. I don't care if you don't like Star Wars. That doesn't that doesn't bother me. I don't care if you right. like the Force Awakens. I'm right. happy for you. You know, Thank it's you. it's not a Thank it's you. it's not. He's not very happy. For no, me. I'm not. I'm not at all. <laughs> but it's not. It's not inconceivable. Don't, don't let his lying. Fool it's you. not inconceivable that you would like that movie. Right. It's. A, it's a, like I said. It's a good popcorn movie. It's a grand spectacle. Mm-hmm. It's just crap story. And then what I what I don't get is is how. Um, People tell me it's a great story because they enjoyed themselves, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a story. But did you feel so, did you feel the build and release of catharsis, of emotion? No, that was because the guy next to him. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm not thing, telling wait. you anything in the lounge anymore. So here's the thing, right? <laughs> We're not having here's that conversation. Thing. And this is why I say, on second viewing, I can see some of Hassan's Thank points. Thank you. Somebody agrees. Is that. <laughs> Slightly. When Han Solo comes in, all of a sudden, Oop. it stops being a movie about Rey. It stops being a movie about Finn. It stops being a movie about the new characters, and it starts becoming, okay, here's like, all the ooh. characters that you love. So, And this was my argument originally. I thought it was a successful movie because it did w- the impossible. It bridged the gap between – it bridged a 30-year gap between what's but new. But it didn't. And, but it did. It, it did didn't. in that sense of – maybe it didn't accomplish it in your eyes, in my eyes. Well, of course. In my eyes – it did start the next generation. But anything of could have done that in that in that context. Sure, anything you put on could have done that. Ah, but okay, the, you're you're coming because from a point of view. It didn't even tie in. It doesn't explain to you what happened in the last thirty years. It doesn't explain to you how everything a, changed. No, I agree. It doesn't. But, but so then, how does that bridge a gap? No, 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 no. But it bridges the gap of it balances the two, the new and the old. It balances. How does the it two. do that? How it ab- well it. it created a cohesive enough story for me to follow to say, okay, there's definitely stuff that we need to we need to eventually learn about. We need to learn why they're in this predicament, why they're not. We know hints and things, and we have to assume when we see Luke Skywalker at the end, we will get some sort what, of explanation in movie two. What's extremely funny is even if you've seen the previous episode, there's, you don't understand what's happening in the next episode. You don't understand who the protagonists or the antagonists no, you or the conflict. That. No, you don't. You understand that. You I don't. Do. You don't. You understand there is a conflict. You don't understand what it's about, the nature of it, who's behind it, why it happened, why didn't any of the events of the previous movie affect the events that are happening in this movie? How come we're not looking at the residuals of that? What, what is, what is the, con- the, the construct of the galaxy? Why is there a resistance and a republic and a, and a first order? Why mm. is any of that happening? Why are they looking for Luke, you know? Like, there's a very vague, oh, they find Luke. Bad things. We will answer all those questions. I'm not answering them. When you answer back. them. <laughs> You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Who 
do you want to connect with? Are you an entrepreneur or intrapreneur looking to build your following? Welcome to our show. Follow, Follow Me, Me Friday, Friday with Joan and Priya. Tune in every Friday at noon Eastern on talkradio.nyc. We're, We're your digital, digital connectors. connectors. Woo woo! What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. I was actually going to ask him for some acting advice because I, I was in a commercial this week. Yes, you were. What would you have asked him? How he can help me further my career. You it's know. a little nebulous. Oh, right? absolutely. It's, a- it's completely self-congratulatory. There's, no, there's nothing else about it. I was awesome. He would have been like, can't sleep. get more jobs. Yeah. <laughs> Secrets of the Sire. Welcome back to Secrets of the Sire. We do this every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, talkradio.nyc. We talk comics, movies, TV, pop culture. And, and we agree to how sounds right. And we do a lot of things. <laughs> uh, we also want to give shots out to our beloved patrons who uh, I actually snubbed tonight, including Brian Phillips, because we did not actually do a, uh, a green room. Well, the, the we were in the was, green room. Was we're on we're fire. plotting. We are plotting a new green room experience yes, we for have our patrons. To. So uh, it's going to be exciting. But Secrets of the Sire is brought to you by our dedicated fans. Einar Peterson, Matt Beyer, Ashley Haikai, <laughs> our program director, Stephanie Dolce, our executive producer, Steve Ovecki, Brian Phillips, and Christina Gillen, and as always, our Uber fan and Game of Thrones expert, Christina Dolce. Fix. So, there you go. Fix. So, uh, just a couple comments. Now, Brian Everham, who never agrees with Hassan, actually did agree with Hassan when know, it came to he's ruining us. He's ruining uh, our relationship. He said, he said episode seven did not bridge the gap. It just retold a story that already existed with new characters added. Force Awakens was okay. Uh, Meanwhile, you also had Kai Cole, another talk sh- not married to Joss Whedon. No, not the not and the not, not the I mean, ex- neither right, are not Kai the Cole. ex-wife of of uh, yeah, none of that. Uh, Kai Cole, fellow talk sh- talk radio NYC host. That reminds me of those Wendy's Twitter taunts. At Wendy, what's your favorite thing about McDonald's? The exit. That was that was <laughs> in your, that was in your comment. Yes, yes, it was. Hmm? I think that's where I stole it from. She broke her leg. Son of a gun. I'll it's tough not being married to well Justin. The middle three <laughs> were the best. I don't know how you could not enjoy those and like the last one, James Gallagher. There, here you go. Sorry, well. James. There you go. See, so Pat, no. Pat's going to be Pat's going to be done talking. That was Brian. No, that was, that was James Gallagher. No, no that was. Brian. Oh, that's right. That was. Oh, that was Brian. Okay, yeah. that was Brian. Everyone. James Gallagher said, "Why not get Michael Bay to do episode 10? Yes, and I told him to be quiet. <laughs> and he knows what. Oh, he's, Michael Bay. He's so he good. He knows what he's doing. All right. Well, uh, Pat's not talking for the rest. We're of We're going to switch gears a little bit here. I mean, we could honestly, quiet, we can, and we will do an entire episode on Star Wars. We'll actually do two no, episodes on Star Wars. I won't be here that in that, December. <laughs> I won't be here that day. Uh, we've actually got some great guests lined up. I'm going to take a moment to talk about this. We've got uh, Lauren Lester on tonight. Uh, um, who is the voice of Nightwing and Robin. He's also in the Orville. Uh, we've got Kevin Sorbo coming on in the next couple weeks. We've got Nicholas Brennan coming on in the next couple weeks. Oh, yeah. Lou, Lou Ferrigno coming on. Talk Thor, because he's in the Thor movie. Uh, we're working on some other secret super guests. Secret super, or super secret. No, no, no. They're, they're just, more so they're, super secret. They're secret and super. Because we're not telling anybody who they are. So right. That's super secret. And uh, we will have Billy Corgan on in a couple of... Uh, yeah, couple. Yeah. It'll, it'll end, up be, end up being like a, probably a couple end more... More weeks than it's we think. Be yeah, it's going to be the end of the year. year. That's a good way out. to put it. Uh, but you know, we're just we're just somehow we're attracting uh, attention from people, and we <laughs> will take it. Cause we got to stop. That's we why we did it. this show, we right? Is to get attention. We're really we're very attention starved, and we're like, look at us, <laughs> look at us, please. <laughs> You're the one on camera. I'm not. This is very true, but that's in your contract. <laughs> oh, we're going to be getting a whole new studio set up. It's going to be fantastic. We got yeah. We're going to be. You're going to be on camera by the end of the year. I, I guarantee. I look forward to it. Darn it. <laughs> That face is not my true public. At all. all right. Speaking <laughs> of the Orville, uh, we're going to do our fall TV preview. 
Um, There's no one on that ship named Redenbacher, and that really upset me. So, did, did anyone catch the pilot, by the way? Did anybody get a, get a chance to see it? I, I don't know it. what it is. That joke okay, right so over the his Orville head. is a new show on Fox. It is a Star Trek homage in a comedy kind of thing. It's oh, getting this it's is the family Seth MacFarlane. Yeah, yeah, Seth MacFarlane it vehicle. It wants to be. It is. It's getting a lot of like mixed reviews in terms of the pilot that came out. I, I caught the pilot. I caught most of it. The internet. Um, it actually wasn't horrible. And pilots are so hard. There was nothing wrong with that show. And the internet, see, this is a problem. The internet had, had raised the Orville up as this, this, you know, this beacon of hope because everybody is a very sure. upset with Star Trek Discovery. The yes. idea of Star oh, we're going to talk that too. As oh well. yeah, we will. We'll get to it. But I'm saying, so it's like, ooh, the Orville is even more Star Trek than Star Trek. This is a terrible time, and blah blah blah. But without actually having seen the the pilot, so the pilot drops. And now, surprise, the internet's not happy, you know, or or, or lukewarm yeah. about it. Yeah. And I thought it was funny. I do agree with uh, a couple of assessments that it doesn't quite know what it wants to be yet. Sure. So it doesn't know but if it wants to be a comedy. show yeah. that. I mean, that's the I problem, find it's right? I mean, but it's... I've heard from other people who've seen other episodes, and they said, like, uh, two, three episodes in, um, it, it, it really starts to pick up. It really finds its footing. So and I what I've seen from the original, from the uh, from the pilot, yeah, I've seen enough to make me want to watch all the way. I up actually until, enjoyed it too. I mean, yeah. I, look, I, it wasn't it wasn't episode seven great, but it was definitely uh-huh. like interesting. Well, very few things can be. <laughs> it was put you know, a gun and, in and your mouth a and blow of your funny head off. Great. Gags and and <laughs> look, you're introducing your all your characters. Like and, and Pat, you know, help me out with this as, to, as well too. How hard is it to write issue one? How hard is it to get that story issue off the one ground? Is the easiest it's the thing. no, it's, it's the hardest. It's easy. Issue two. I've so many issue Every ones, single not thing funny. that I've written, issue two is always the easiest because at that point I'm like, great, you know what's going on, and if you don't, you can just go read issue one. Yeah. And now we can kind of go. I always get stuck at issue three. I'm like, ah, I said it. Issue three can be hard. Yes. Um, I've done it, everything I needed there. Issue one can be hard. Um, what I want to ask about this one is. Uh, is it the same humor as his other uh, work? It's not over the top. It's not okay. over the top. I mean, there's definitely okay. there's like a That's penis there's surprising. a penis joke. There's a there's an alien ejaculation joke at the beginning. Okay. Um. There, but there's some like just some neat things in it, and he okay. he clearly has a, a love for the sci-fi genre. He clearly has a love for Star Trek and things like that. So I mean, okay. it it shows. It's not really. It was fun. Okay. Like it was you a know, fun thing. I, I haven't liked any of his work, but this is the first one where I might give it a shot. Give it a shot. Give it a shot. I, I, I don't. I don't. I yes, will definitely you might take find a look it as at exciting it. as the first three Star Wars movies. I will take a look. At <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh boy! I mean, I was a young. Look who's been paying attention this whole time. <laughs> I was a Look young. Coming back yeah. with that. I might give another chance. You know. No, don't, oh, don't, 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 don't do <laughs> them any favors. <laughs> don't so, do George Lucas any favors. We're gonna do something fun with you here. Um, we're gonna. I basically I, I plucked out the pop culture related. Um, Fall TV shows coming out, uh, and uh, and we're going to do a little fun game. But real quick, let's get a rundown and a, just a brief little overview. You had the Orville, which we talked about. Outlander, I included this in our outline because it's just so darn popular. And it's yes, got this sci-fi time me. travel element to it. It does, in this weird kind of rustic way. And it was based on a book, so there's that... There's that based on a know, series of books. Right, well, that's what I'm saying. So uh, it, it has that, it has that Twilight-esque think, kind sorry. of thing to it. And Diana if you haven't, haven't caught Outlander, it, uh, it uh, revolves around a character named uh, Claire who travels through time, ends up meeting like, the love of her life like 200 years prior, or right. something like that. Even and, though she's married and been right, 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 times. Right, right, right. So. And it is uh, produced and done by, uh, by Mike... Uh, right. Ron Moore, Ronald Moore, yeah, who uh, also did uh, Battlestar Galactica and Star Trek, fame. right? Star so, Trek Next Generation, huh? I didn't know that he was. See, this is this is the wealth of knowledge it. you get from being here. And you know what, too, this is another one that I would check out, uh, just because I root for if, novelists. If okay. only I cared, I would check it out. <laughs> uh, we got Marvel's Inhumans <laughs> debuting in September too. I mean, we got that as well too. After the royal family of Inhumans is splintered by a military coup, they barely escape to Hawaii. It's a good place to go. Hey, where they're surprised. Rising interactions away. with the lush world and humanity around them may prove to not only save them, but Earth itself. Oh, poor us. We're good looking with superpowers and we're in Hawaii. You know, Feel I was going to do us. this. I was going to do this. I was going to run down the list, but I can't help myself now. We're just going to go right into it. We're going to do over under, okay? okay? Now, over under, I had to describe this to both my co host and my guest co host. I knew. I no, knew you had no idea. No, I over knew. under. I'm going to give a number of some kind, and you're going to tell me if you think the number is going to be over or under. Whatever number I provide. 
So for the Orville, I thought the obvious one was pretty easy, right? Over, under, episodes before it's canceled. Six. What network is it on? Fox. Under. (laughs) I say over. Come on. You're going to go over six. I say over simply because of the Seth MacFarlane angle. Fox is going to give him at least a season. He's on camera, though. Yeah. They'll give him a season. They'll let him do it. I also want It'll all happen. of our Facebook uh, folks to chime in as well, too. Give me your over-under episodes before it gets canceled. we got to come up with, you know, next time i got to supply you with some really good music. Like, da 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 What the heck was that? Can we copy that? <laughs> yes, you, We're yeah. going to use that from you now on. do whatever you want. <laughs> that'll be my, we can loop yes. that. That'll yeah. be our, that'll that be our totally music happening. going forward. We could put like an EDM beat to that. That's, <laughs> that's totally <laughs> happening. <laughs> really get it going. Outlander, percentage of males who admit to watching the show over <laughs> under 34%. Oh, under. <laughs> <laughs> over, over. That would admit to watching it, though. Yes. I mean... Uh, of all you haven't seen an episode, of, dude. I, I have not. Of all the topics that we've discussed today, that show, that concept is the most interesting to me. That is yeah, until yeah. you, you see an episode. Well, what about the Inhumans? Seasons it lasts, even though it probably should be canceled. Inhumans, three. Uh, I'm going to go three. Uh, over. Over three. It's going to last. Okay, so it's going to painfully last. Yeah, it's just like that's Agents really the of gist of the over under. It's, it's just gonna, like Agents of Shield. It's going to painfully last it's gonna limp over along. three seasons. It's going to keep limping on. I, I mean, I hate to keep this disagreeing with you, um, but I'm, I'm going to say under. Boop. I'm going to go under. It's not going to last one season. I'm going to go under as well, too. Just because. Um, what network is it on? It's ABC. It's, a, it's over. <laughs> I, I, I love writing. Even, uh, even Agent Carter had two seasons. Yes. But Agent Carter was actually really that good. Was yes. The first season was really good. And they well canceled received. that after two seasons, but she had she got two yeah, seasons. Yeah, I know. But that's why I said three. See, but I, see, she, I, she's I was, a star, though. She's I a star. Careful. And it was well received. This, and again, I love writing for Marvel, um, but I'm going to say that. Disclaimer. It, it is objectively, so far, not well received. Yeah. And um, I. As someone who has seen the trailer, and yeah. I, I've seen just the general gist of the reaction. Did it? Did it even yeah. end up in IMAX at all? Yes, because uh, I know it, I heard a rumor it was supposed to be. Yes, <laughs> but it kind of, it kind of, I, I say over, <laughs> kind of didn't make it. All right, The Walking Dead. The season Rick brings all out war to Negan and his forces. The saviors are larger, better equipped, and ruthless. But Rick and the unified communities are fighting for the promise of a brighter future. Over under. Seasons left before they kill Daryl. One. No, two. I guess, I guess it's got to be two. We'll, oh. go, we'll go two. 1.5. 1.5. Over. I say over. 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 Do you think they're ever going to kill Daryl? No. Yes. I think they have to, right? I think when they run last out of episode. gimmicks, but I, I think that'll be the last season. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. It'll be um, the second to last <clears throat> episode. That's when you do that. Yeah. And yep. they're like, oops, gotcha. <laughs> gotcha, fans. So this one's this one's a Pat Shan favorite. Stranger Things. Stranger Things season two begins nearly oh, a yeah. year after the first installment on Halloween. Yeah, because those Indiana. kids are aging exponentially. And uh, <laughs> but not all is well with young Mister Byers, as evidenced by the slug he coughed up at the end of season one, which I actually now know because I did see the show. Thank, thank, thank you, Keith McCormick, who recommended it to me. That's why you got to do your job. Man. He you're, seems you're, to be seeing images from the, the upside media. down. The question is whether they're real or not. So it seems like he's having some sort of post. You stress. cough up a slug, things are bad. I'm going to go, <laughs> this is a fun one, right? This is not a canceled or be canceled kind of over-under. Over-under, 80s pop culture references. I'm going to say five in the season. Way over or over. under? Way over. Like oh, way over? Over, yeah. Like, I know they have go- Ghostbusters in the first season. I the mean, they episode. had to have had like 20 in the trailer. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> All right, over, over, <laughs> under 20. <laughs> Over. Okay, so it's oh. just a pop culture. Well, how fest. about over on your percentages? Like, uh, what, what is the like uh, about? Give it a fifty percent that um, the show loses its uh, star appeal for the second season. Oh yeah, Hassan's a big proponent oh, of this. Un- under, under fifty percent. So you say you're you're saying the under, yeah. There's no chance. There, there's no chance in the world that it's going to lose its star appeal. There's no chance in the world. There's no chance. No. no. Wow. No you just condemned it to death. I think. <laughs> Why? Because anybody who says absolutely that something is not going to happen has just made sure that the fates are going to make it happen. I mean, here's the thing. I am this boat cannot sink. Well, yeah. <laughs> God himself cannot sink this boat. The first season, <laughs> it, it was, was aliens. Received it and, and it was too good. It, it, it was just... It, it was, was too, too good. good? Yeah. It was too good. Yes. 
It, Did you not like it? I liked it. I didn't, I never thought anything was too good. Well, no, it's I'm easy, it's, easy now. It, it's too down good. boy. It's too good to tank because it's the same exact team. You know, and, and I didn't say that they would tank it. Idea. I didn't. I don't think he's saying the critical not, response and the critical and fan response will not be. Yeah, yes. I, I actually agree with Pat though. I think, I think Netflix is going to keep it as long as humanly possible. I never said that Netflix or anybody else will, is is going to uh, is going to diminish it. Right. I just think that it's it's honeymoon is over with the second season. No, I don't think so. I think the honeymoon goes till at least season three or four. All right, real quick because we're going to go to commercial and then we're going to have uh, Lauren Lester, the voice of Robin and Nightwing, and he. Also in Real the quick, then get to it. <laughs> Star Trek over under episodes before they kill the white male officer. Oh boy, I'm gonna go five. Officer, isn't he? He's not a captain on the. Sh- uh, there's the two female captains. I don't know. Why is it important that he's white? Right, because of the whole diversity thing. See how I'm doing that? See how I'm kind of tying things. You're in? not even doing it cleverly, though. I think it's very clever. No, of course you do. <laughs> I wrote it. Of course, of course you do, because you're a white male. <laughs> <laughs> this is very true, actually. Racism. Yeah. I Hashtag. <laughs> Hashtag racism. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever happened to prejudice? Remember, like that was like the that stepping used to be stone. The thing, but no, 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 no. But that was the stepping stone. Like prejudice racist... is not extreme enough, right? Now, racist... We got to go straight to racist racism. Used to be like the people at, in Charlottesville, like they're racist, right? Right. But now, like if you tell like anything that's remotely like it's like resembled it's race, like... you're you're not like it used to be like while well, you're prejudiced. It's against like how these. Sugar Crisp became Super Sugar Crisp, yeah, yeah, right? Like... And then we couldn't go back to Sugar Crisp anymore. We can't go yeah, back to racism. No, yeah. Yeah, no. I mean, you can't go back to prejudice. No, there's, there's no in between. You are either. That's it. Yes. That's it. So my over-under is four. They're going to kill that guy. Done. <laughs> I, uh, Me I being black, no I'm going to reference. take a mulligan. <laughs> <laughs> I take a mulligan. All right. Real quick before we go to commercial, The Gifted on Fox. In a world where mutated humans are treated with distrust and fear, an institute for mutants battles to achieve peaceful coexistence with humanity. <laughs> Starring Amy Acker and Stephen Moyer. Uh, Amy Acker from Buffy and Angel. or Angel. Not Buffy, just Angel. Angel. Oh. Um, and Stephen Moyer from True Blood. <laughs> Episodes before they introduce actual X-Men characters. Like, isn't that essentially the X-Men? But they're like, but they're not... It, the, the whole premise of the show is right. it's not X Men, it's just in the universe. Right. Who, who cares then? Isn't that the worst like concept ever? Does some no. of these kids have power? I would watch that before any X Men show. Because I, I <laughs> No, seriously. <laughs> but it is an X Men yeah. show. No, but we have those characters in the movies and that's already too much. Yeah. I'm gonna say I, I'm gonna say episodes where they introduce an actual X Men character will be like two. Because they'll be like, wait a minute, They're this show is not try- Well, yeah, but we thought that with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and it took them like 10 uh, episodes. No, like- Deathlock was in like the first episode. Deathlock was not in the movies. Hello? Oh, that's true. That's very true. Hello? I go over. All right, when we come back, we've got Lauren Lester, the voice of Robin and Nightwing, and he's in the Orville. Coming up next. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. <laughs> If you have an interest in marijuana, you want to know about marijuana, law, policy, and culture, then feel free to join me, Joseph A. Bondi, every Friday at 11 o'clock in the morning on my show, In the Know 420 on TalkingAlternative.com. Hi, this is Rob K. And I'm Callie Alpert. And we're hosts of The Rob and Callie Show. Are you looking for a show that talks about real stuff like life, love, the pursuit of being yourself? Then you have come to the right place because we cover topics ranging from chivalry to gratitude to your relationship with money and everything in between. So listen to us on The Rob and Callie Show Tuesdays, 8 to 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on talkradio.myc. Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. I want to know you're good. I want to know why, you know, what you thought was the shining star in this movie. The seat that I was sitting in in the theater was very comfortable. Okay. There wasn't a lot of sticky stuff on the floor, which I hate. I, I hear you. I hear you. People talking behind me, but people always talk behind me. I really? Wherever I go, and it's the same two Didn't people, I Didn't we have this I conversation suspect. after a while? Yeah. The just, problem is you. Yeah. <laughs> Secrets of the Sire. Welcome. 
Welcome back to Secrets of the Sire. We do this every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, talkradio.nyc. We also stream live on Facebook, facebook.com slash Secrets of the Sire. We do many things. We've got a lot of monumental changes coming to the show, I'm telling you. We're going to actually have some really uh, professional video camera equipment. We're going we're gonna to oh. have a studio set besides my set that I have back here. Like, oh. We've got some changes of brewing, who, who um, we but it'll follow New York Comic stuff. Con because right now I'm just in New York Comic Con mode. we got that yes. in a couple months. we got like 30 pages. We got Lauren Lester coming up, but first uh, we have our guest co-host tonight, Pat Shan. He is uh, he writes comics, Destiny New York, Vampire. He's Annie, a great Van writer, Helsing, a great creator, but novels, he doesn't like any good movies. Iron Man, shows. Avengers, <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy, and upcoming Thor. He lives in New York with his wife Amy and their army of cats. Um, <laughs> Pat, you just got your re- your Kickstarter recently funded. Give us yes. give us the whole. Wait, wait, wait. Give us the spiel. How many cats though? First, before we go. All right. Well, if my apartment complex is listening too. Uh, <laughs> all right. Okay. <laughs> All right, John. move on. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Uh, my, Destiny New York. Destiny New York. Uh, you know, that book that you wrote it's, it's and true. that you kickstarted. started <laughs> Volume 2 was just funded. So uh, we do everything. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, our goal was 20000 um in, I believe, 14 days we goals. were able to raise uh, that, that goal. You know? That's awesome. And, and we're still pushing on. We, we have stretch goals. Um, give, me, give me like a, and now great, you have give a me stretch like limo. one great stretch goal. Like, give me, <laughs> even if it's not there yet, like, right. give, me, give me what's like something that you can't wait to, to All right, to, well, to one that I'll goal. talk about here is that if we hit 30,000. That's 000, where else you're going to talk about it. Right. <laughs> I will, I will uh, write an entire extra novel. And, <laughs> <laughs> an ebook that that will tie Hassan in will now this go sit in a corner jerk. and cry <laughs> because he's like, wait a minute, wait, a minute, you're just gonna pull a novel out? What? Yeah. He's been working on his novel for thirty jerk. years. <laughs> go ahead. I don't like Pat Chan. <laughs> Sorry, man. Uh, yeah, it's this. Um, it's a novel that uh, features some of the characters from the book when they were younger. Okay, um, yeah. and it it, it it tells a uh, yeah, couple a couple b- hundred thousand words. So a what? background story. <laughs> so what? <laughs> <laughs> so what? And um, yeah, I have a, a cover in the works for that one. Uh, okay, that I He's will got the cover debut when it comes out. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. But yeah, um, no, you know, I, I tried to make the stretch goals kind of extravagant, just because they're so. Just so that you don't hit them, you're not obligated <laughs> to actually having. To so do we didn't actually, actually yes. get to the stretch goal, but one of the stretch goals for the Sire Kickstarter was going to be that we would fly you out here, we'd put you up in a hotel, we would then have you on the show, and then take you out drinking. Is that true? Really? Yeah, it was. But then I really, but but you didn't. Remember, you remember when I remember when I was having I don't know if you saw the post but I was actually having technical difficulties launching the Kickstarter because apparently you can't use the word you can't offer alcohol as a reward. Oh. I did not know that, and that was what was holding up the Kickstarter from being launched. That's because so, you didn't read the rules. Mike. The next Kickstarter, I'm totally going to do it. It was like a $1,500 reward. You shouldn't mention alcohol, but you should just be drunk during the Wait, video. Wait, so you, you, you can't say, I'll buy you some drinks. Right? There, no. Somehow, yeah. again, it's an algorithm and alcohol. You should bleep it out, so it's like, buy you some D, and then apostrophe, like, just like, again, blur it out. Totally would have, had I, had I done my actual homework and tried to launch this thing, right. or, or get it ready to launch, like, before an hour before it was yeah. supposed to, I would have had the sun would have had the move. Yeah, right, right, yeah. Things so. would have been different. Sire trade paperback coming soon. <laughs> All right, I want to welcome our next guest. His name is Lauren Lester. He is a native of Los Angeles. He's been doing voice acting and he's also been doing real acting. Uh, once again, got to give a shout out to our main man, Jerry Milani. Wizard World Chicago got me access to these guys. Um, so go check out the Wizard World shows. They just had Nashville with Stanley. Um, the Chicago show is a blast. And uh, here's Lauren Lester talking about Batman and Harley Quinn. This is uh, Mike Dolce for Secrets of the Sire radio show and podcast. I am here with Lauren Lester, the voice of Dick Grayson on the Batman animated TV series and upcoming Batman and Harley Quinn as well, too, Nightwing. Uh, Lauren, thank you so much for taking some time out. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. So, first question, there was a significant time between, the, um, you know, voicing Dick Grayson in the Batman series and then bringing, coming back and doing Nightwing and then coming back and doing Batman and Harley Quinn. Is there any nervousness, any trepidation for doing it? Oh, no, not at all. Uh, I, I was so bummed when the show ended because I really thought that the, they were developing the Nightwing character and I thought there's so much more to do with this guy, but I thought, oh, well, you know, that's on to something else. So, so excited, you know, years later to be able to do it again. And uh, we did it last year for Viewmaster, and we're doing it again this year for Batman and Harley Quinn, the new movie. Did you, uh, do you feel like your voice has changed at all, in between the gaps at all? No, I'm really lucky. I have the same voice I had then. And, uh, you know, I take care of myself. I don't smoke, you know. So 
I still, I still have the same voice. <laughs> uh, what about the tonal shift? Because Batman Harley Quinn is a little more calm, a little more lighter tone than what the Batman animated series was for a cartoon. Uh, how is it working with the tonal shift? Well, you know, uh, Nightwing, uh, uh, Robin, and Nightwing were always kind of the comic relief. You know, for Batman, you know, they would always try to get him to lighten up. I don't know. I don't know if they ever said in the series, Light, lighten up. But, you know, that's kind of the tone of what it was. So here they've really gone even further with that and made, uh, written a lot of comedy for, for Nightwing. And it's terrific. Uh, how did you get into voice acting to begin with? Well, I'm celebrating 40 years now as an actor. And um, that's where you're supposed to say, you look really good. You look great. Oh, good. Thank you, good. <laughs> And uh, 40 years ago, when you had an agent, they would represent you in every area. They represent you in voiceover, in uh, commercial, movie, TV, theater, wherever, you know, wherever work was. And whatever you would uh, land in and do well in, they would push you even further. Just so happens that uh, I did really well in voiceover right from the very beginning. So they really pushed me in that direction and got me a lot of opportunities in that direction. What do you prefer? Do you prefer live action? Do you prefer, prefer voiceover? Or is there just... Is there a big difference anyway when, when you approach it? No, I love it all. I really do love it all. And uh, I, I especially like comedy because that, uh, that was where I really started in the business. That's why I like the new movie because it is very funny. But no, I, uh, whether it's voiceover or on camera, I, I just have a great time. So most fans know you as a voice, but you're going to be in front of the camera on the new uh, Fox show, The Orville. Uh, talk to me about the show itself and talk to me about working with Seth MacFarlane. Oh, this show is going to be so great. Uh, I, w I was at San Diego Comic-Con and saw a lot of the pilot and saw the panel that they had down there. Seth MacFarlane is like the greatest guy to work with because, you know, he's, he's amazing, first of all. He does everything. He, he, he wrote the episode I was in. He, I'm sure he writes parts or at least most of, most of the episodes. He's the showrunner, so he's the producer. He makes all the decisions. He's not the director, but he watches every take and has input, you know. And, of course, he's the star of the show. And, you know, like, well, while we're doing the, the, doing the show and he's learning his lines, people are bringing him swatches of costumes for the next episode or, or, or showing him what the model of a set looks like for two episodes down the line. And the great part is he does this all in a very congenial, friendly, fun way. Guy in his position doesn't have to be like that, but he sure does. And so from the top down, the whole set is friendly and a joy to be there because he's he's a joy tell me about the uh what what the premise behind the show is and tell me about your character in particular well the premise of the show is a tribute really to star trek so uh, seth is the uh captain kirk kind of character there's a a first first uh commander who is not a vulcan and not a klingon but something else so that he's taken all those elements and the music and the look of the show is very much a tribute to star trek but there's a lot of social satire in it. So in the way that the original show had a lot of social commentary, this is a lot of social satire because, of course, Seth is very funny. So in the episode I'm in, I'm a member of the crew who's undercover on a planet, and I get into trouble, and that's all I can say. So you're not a red shirt, right? I'm not a red shirt, no. No, I would be killed in the first two minutes, right? If you're a red shirt, isn't that right? That's it, yeah. You don't, you don't want to be a red shirt. That's, uh, that's what we definitely... I, I actually have a friend who's done... Uh, Comic Cons for years and years. He was one of the red shirts. Was he really? Yes. <laughs> yes. Did his line disappear after two minutes? <laughs> well, he actually, in those days, uh, if you did a TV show, you could do it many times. Well, so he was a red shirt multiple times. Yeah. Well, he was a multiple red shirt. Uh, the other one I've seen that's pretty funny is uh, I've seen the guy who played Gorn. Yeah, he does, he does Comic Cons too. Tell me about your Comic Con experience. I mean, you've been doing the shows now for two years. Uh, any, anything cool, anything outrageous? So, again, any kind of con any standout moments at a Comic-Con? Well, uh, this happens over and over again. Um, I learned from doing the Comic-Cons how touched people were by the show, how much it meant to them. Uh, I knew people thought it was a really cool show, and they liked watching it, and it was entertaining. But I, I just learned from the Comic-Cons how much it really, really touched their lives. So most of the people who watched it uh, watched it right after school, so if they were having a bad day at school or a bad day at home or if they were a latchkey kid and the house was empty when they came home, it was one of the things they could really count on. And, you know, people tell me this with their tears in their eyes, you know, and that really means a lot, you know. 
So we're at Wizard World Chicago. You're actually paired up with uh, with your partner over there, Kevin Conroy. How is it like working with Kevin? And and talk about the working relationship you guys have. Oh, he's he's great. He, you know, Kevin has a theater background. I have a theater background. Mark Hamill has a theater background. So when we work together, there's sort of a shorthand. You know, people from the theater. That's the way they they bounce off of each other and work off of each other. And uh, I I just have loved seeing him for the past couple of years. We've seen each other, each other a lot because we've done a lot of these cons together. Up until now, uh, you know, a few years had passed and I hadn't seen him and people would ask me for an autograph and they'd say, and can you have Kevin sign this too? And I'd say, I, I, I haven't seen him in the Batcave lately. <laughs> so now I can say, yeah, go right over there. <laughs> so obligatory geek question, who would win in a fight, uh, your Dick Grayson or Chris O'Donnell's Dick Grayson? My Dick Grayson. And and what would you what would he do? What would Nightwing do to defeat Chris O'Donnell? One punch, he's finished. Done. I love it. I love it. I love it. Lauren, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. That was Lauren Lester at Wizard World Chicago. Uh, really, again, th- big thanks out to the to the uh, peeps out there, Jerry Milani, uh, Peter Katz, getting us the access that we needed. When we come back, we go spinning the racks. You are listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Are you into comics, movies, and pop culture at large? What about music and TV? Then you're in for a treat. This is Michael Dolce, your host on TalkingAlternative.com. I've been professionally writing comic books, screenplays, and music articles for almost 15 years. Catch my show, Secrets of the Sire, at its new primetime slot, Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and get the inside scoop on the pop culture universe you love to talk about. For more info, go to secretsofthesire.com. Hello, this is Mark Torres. And Pronto Comic Zone, Dominic Sperano. And listen to our show, It Came From The Radio, right here on talkradio.nyc, every Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We talk about entertainment, movies, comic books, and other news. So make sure you check us out. That's right here, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, every Wednesday, talkradio.nyc. TalkingAlternative.com What does biennial mean? Biennial? So, biennial? It's two years, every two years. Every two years, is that what it is? Yeah, What's in that? turns, biannual. Biennial. 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 Taking place every other year. Taking place. This is some poor writing by Polygon. I think it is biannual. I think you read it wrong. No, 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 no. I literally copied and pasted, so... It's biennial. Maybe they're smarter than we are. <laughs> That's not possible. Secrets of the Sire. Welcome back to Secrets of the Sire. That was Lester Lore in the voice of Robin and Nightwing as he talks about the Batman and Harley Quinn movie, which I guess, Hassan, you were saying some controversial uh, reaction to that? Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, on par with, yes, it's on nice. par with uh, Batman, uh, which was the Get the your killing animated joke. sex scene on. Look at that go. The killing joke. Batman had, had sex with uh, uh, Batgirl. Some Batgirl action. Yeah, mm. and the internet lost its mind. And so, <laughs> to double down, they did, uh, they did this one, where I think Nightwing is is having a relationship with Harley Quinn. Well, that's the thing, though. Batman doesn't have sex. Bruce Wayne has sex. No, he was a Batman when he not had sex. Spo- <laughs> he was, he was that, totally... That just crosses a line. He was batted out when that he had... That just crosses a yeah, line. Yeah, it turned it into a kink. You know, it, it, it got really weird. We should run it up the poll. How many people dress up as Batman? And then there's this oh, entire no, no. scene... <laughs> Please don't. It's going to be so high. There's this entire scene after that where where Barbara Gordon is, ex- is, is describing the sex. Yeah. So just to double down on that... She's like, oh, it was like fireworks and, and 
So Batman knows how to. Catwoman's like meh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe well, for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the bat costume gets yeah. done. Uh, we yeah, just... I'm dressed like a cat, we, so yeah, it, it takes more. <laughs> it takes a little bit more. That turns Pat Shand on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Oh, He's boy. got nothing there. Pat's He's like, got... don't, don't, He's like, don't ah, put me in this. Uh, army of cats. Don't oh, put me okay. there. <laughs> All right, we do this every week. We go spinning the racks to bring you the most fantastical pop culture news out there. It's my favorite part of the night. <laughs> we, uh, we're actually going to be very Thor-centric tonight. Why? Uh, because there was some news last week we just didn't get to. We kind of talked about the J.J. Abrams stuff. So, it's a good reason. You know, there's you know, not really a lot yet. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's fall. That's, yeah. that's good. It's coming two months, right? Tess- uh, Ragnarok, two months? No. Less than two months. November 2nd. Oh, f- yeah. Crazy. Wow. Crazy. Creeping up right? on us. Real Tessa fast. Thompson calls out dumb male writers for sexist superhero descriptions. So All Pat, right. I, I catered this one for you, man. This is, this is it right here. <laughs> is, uh, As a dumb male, Pat, how do you feel about... <laughs> Wait, hold on. Scroll, to her, scroll up to her picture again? She's the one that plays Valkyrie. Oh, oh. Sh- and she's oh, also in she's Westworld. She's Veronica Mars. Oh, wait. What does she play in Veronica she Mars? She plays uh, the Jackie black girl. from season two. She was a black girl. <sighs> season two is not so good. Se- season two is amazing. <sighs> it's You're not that good. No, no. Cold, hard trip. And season two is No, amazing. we've talked about this. Season one was a perfect season. Right. With a great mystery. Season right. two... Uh, did its best. Have you rewatched since to recant no, your haven't. horrible opinion? No, I haven't. I have not. No, uh, go watch episode four again. All right. <laughs> Tessa Thompson doesn't want to be your badass. The thirty-three-year-old thirty-three. There goes my voice all of a sudden. Not not my voice. My uh, ability to articulate. The thirty-three-year-old actress who stars as Valkyrie in the upcoming Thor Ragnarok said some screenwriters are getting lazy about characterizing female action heroes. There's an unfair position women are sometimes put in in the context of superhero movies and action movies. Where at once they have to be very strong and fierce, but also sexy. I don't know why they talk about these things as they're they're new. There's like, w- uh, like no, but these this are th- these like th- these are trending. Like, yeah, I know. Hey, I know, women right? are being treated unfairly all of a sudden. <laughs> like, wait a minute. <laughs> There's one word I hate in all scripts in Hollywood at the moment in describing women, and that is badass. Now, I I actually it is used out, way too much. If you go back to episode 50 of Secrets of the Sire, we had Paul Jenkins on homework. I asked him specifically, how come women, all women now in film, have to be badass? Like, that's it. They're all experts at martial arts. Right. They're all like strong fierce like you can't like if you show a damsel in distress yeah. like that's like a cardinal sin like i actually cringe like i said it's like it's it's the prejudice racism thing right yes because uh you can't call a woman uh hot anymore she's got to be smoking hot now oh you my can't. god i don't think that's the right that's, that's not the right segue actually well, no i will say this. i'm saying that every every phrase just has to be dialed up it to its to extreme right extreme. okay so All she right. can't and be that, uh, she can't be an assertive woman she can't be an independent what if she's woman smoking a she, she's smoking she's <laughs> smoking Smoking sort of badass, bad right? <laughs> right. Um, That's going to be next. They're going to be like three. F- three so, three Destiny in New York is a, is is a story of two lesbian uh, sorcerers, yes, who have these magical powers. So, I mean, you have an, a you have a good, unique perspective on this. What do you think? Well, um, I once actually a left lesbian. a title I had been on for a long time because I kept getting the note that it has to be more badass, and it has to be. <laughs> um, it's true. It has to be right. more badass, and it has to be more tuned to a male audience, which. I, I was writing the book. Did they actually tell you it had to be more badass? Thing, they though, use right? the actual term. It has to be. So it's a, yes. it's a genuine Hollywood term. It's a, yes. oh, yeah. it's a genuine oh, yeah. mainstream term. I've been told to make characters a badass female character probably oh, um, <laughs> probably a thousand times. I mean, it's it's a common note. I couldn't do it. And this is a thing, though, too, right? I'd like, be the... like, you know what? Um, can I make her a sad ass? I can make her a sad ass. <laughs> I can make Destiny her an angry York. ass. The like, characters <laughs> of Destiny New York are sad ass. But that's the thing, though. Like, I'm sitting there like, I'm sick and tired of this. Like, it's almost like, you know, a woman's allowed to cry. A woman's allowed to be a three-dimensional character. Right. It's one of those things where you notice it and you can't unnotice it anymore. Yeah, no, I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know. And it's, there's, it's there's, there. there are very few characters that are allowed to be vulnerable, like three-dimensionally no, right. vulnerable and still tough. And dear God that they need a man in their life because that's the cardinal sin. Here's yeah. the thing. I'm not saying all female characters need a man. They should want a man. They but I know. Need a man. I know. No, no, no. That's but how you get like, away you from know, that. As a th- as there are all different kinds of women. There are all different kinds of women. I'm saying everything is just straightforward. And it's a cardinal rule. You can't. You can't. Now, in, in your case, they're lesbians, so they don't need a man in their life. They need a strong, badass woman in their <laughs> oh life. Oh, my God. No, but yeah. it's, like, it's, it's like this cardinal rule. Like You can't show any weakness. 
They're, they need to be self-sufficient and this and, and it's great. That's all. These are all great things. But that could be one character, and another character could be like a you know a, a vulnerable female at the same time, right? Yeah. Or no, we're not allowed to do that anymore. That's it. No, I, I think that. But um, you guys like the Force Awakens. That's strange. <laughs> well, she's I, a strong female character. She's badass. Is no, she? no, with she's that, with no weaknesses. I think that. Um, I think that people have taken that term strong female character and have ran with it in a way that shows that they ha- never understood that term because they take the strong to mean powerful yeah. when really strong means strongly written, yeah. right? Strongly developed. Any woman who's given birth is a strong female character. Absolutely. <laughs> Especially compared to us guys. No, no, I got to say, so my I've wife, stubbed my, my wife toe and been out for And like it was weeks. very difficult for her, but my back killed me yeah, all day. Really? It we was had to walk her day. around all day. Right. Like, oh, it was my. really You had to stand ridiculous. by the bed and hold her had hand. Had I known there was that much walking that I had to do, <laughs> I would have brought better sneakers. So, let's, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's you know. talk about let's let's let's, let's give one up for the men put the here. Spotlight on me. Yeah, exactly. Here, on me. Exactly. I, I got I'm you. only kidding. Not honey. to derail, but I'm only I kidding, can't honey. believe that, that that Jackie from Veronica Mars. <laughs> She's Valkyrie. That's amazing. She's Valkyrie. Good on her. You know? All right. On that exact topic. Kate Blanchett joined Thor to Blanche. be the Marvel's first female villain. I'm not going to really get into what she talked about and how she talked about it. She looks like a badass Wait, woman, though, and first? I'm kind of cool. Oh, first first stop. Two? Don't do it. You're perpetuating it. No, but like, she actually <laughs> looks like Kate Blanchett is just, she's awesome looking in that movie, Kate right? Kate Blanchett could just do anything. Isn't she like this the That's best? All. Is that true? She's the first? She's the first one. Kate Blanchett is way, is way past ready to make Marvel history as Marvel's first main female what? villain. For, for the hella. movies. Goddess wow. of Thunder. For, oh, for, the, for the films. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I was like, there's no way. Yeah. You had for Nebula from Guardians of the Galaxy, Scarlet Witch from the Avengers, but they were all kind of side characters. She is the first. Nebula was no side character. Yeah. That, that is not. Yeah, that's not, in, that's that's inaccurate. not true. That's she was not, a bad guy for two movies. Yeah. Or two, a movie and a half. All right. Yeah, well, you, you don't have to make that up article because it's already bad enough, you yeah. know? All right, Mr. Pat Shand, tell everyone where they can find you, and we will be back next week real you quick. Find it right there in that At chair. At Pat Shand, um, my latest uh, posts everywhere are all Destiny New York. Awesome. So um, oh, if wow. you still don't hate me for uh, hating on Star Wars, we you know, just you, you uh, loved it. help me make my book happen. When we come back next week, uh, we're going to play uh, Jones or Dread with the most anticipated fall flicks, including Kingsman, Thor, JLA, and more. And we're going to welcome some folks from Funimation, Mike McFarlane and his co-producer Alexa Fox, on to talk about their new animated creation. Thank Thank you guys. See you next week. Bye. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. do you want to connect with? Are you an entrepreneur or intrapreneur looking to build your following? Welcome to our show. Follow, Follow Me Friday, Friday with Joan and Priya. Tune in every Friday at noon Eastern on talkradio.nyc. We're, We're your digital, digital connectors. connectors. Woo woo! What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, all you crazy listeners. Looking to boost your business? Why not advertise on Talking Alternative with very reasonable rates? Interested? Simply email at info at talkingalternative.com. Talking Alternative. Are you into comics, movies, and pop culture at large? What about music and TV? Then you're in for a treat. This is Michael Dolce, your host on talkingalternative.com. I've been professionally writing comic books, screenplays, and music articles for almost 15 years. Catch my show, Secrets of the Sire, at its new primetime slot, Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and get the inside scoop on the pop culture universe you love to talk about. For more info, go to secretsofthesire.com. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network at www.talkingalternative.com. Now, broadcasting 24 hours a day. Talking Alternative. Hi, this is Rob K. And I'm Callie Alpert. And we're hosts of The Rob and Callie Show. Are you looking for a show that talks about real stuff like life, love, the pursuit of being yourself? Then you have come to the right place because we cover topics ranging from chivalry to gratitude to your relationship with money and everything in between. So listen to us on The Rob and Callie Show Tuesdays, 8 to 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on talkradio.myc. Are 
Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant, and on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. 